What is up everybody? My name is Advance and this is Advance Plays. My win streak has hit double digits at 10 and 0 and now here we are week 12 against the Jets. And I'm looking to make them more embarrassed than bringing Brett Favre out of retirement. So, I'm going to shut my mouth and we about to get into this game. Unstoppable force meets movable object. Let's go. always, it's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And we're about five miles northwest of downtown Tampa at beautiful Raymond James Stadium near Florida's Gulf Coast. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the New York Jets and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at this Buccaneer ball club. The beat goes on, doesn't it? A perfect 10-0 to start the campaign. And it's a good locker room to be in, too. Guys don't show up on game day hoping to win. They expect to win. And so far, they've yet to have a letdown. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jets, they come into this one knowing it's been a while since tasting victory. They've dropped four in a row. Can they remember what it was like to win a game? In these types of situations, you're looking for someone to inspire you, and it doesn't have to be one of your best players either. Time to set the old turducken aside and get ready for football as here we go on a Thanksgiving night. This will be fielded at the eight. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. Leading them out is their six-foot-three quarterback, the third overall selection in 2018, Sam Darnold. I love just about everything about him. Love his game, love his makeup, love his moxie, one of my favorite words. This guy's a competitor, gritty, tough, you name it, he's got it. But he did throw an interception in last week's game. That contributed to a loss, and despite the fact he threw three touchdown passes, he's going to be out there redoubling his efforts and trying to play better. Now the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. And we take a look now at the New York offense. And partner, sometimes it's good for a team to get the Thursday night or right after a loss because you don't have very long to stew on what just happened. You have to turn right around, get ready, and go out and play again. Or, as one of the veterans told me, I actually like this because I can keep my anger for this short amount of time and take it out on the other team. Ten yards is the pickup. Good enough for a Jet first down. Let's go. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. And this will be caught at the 30. Give him 30 yards there. All right, Charles, let me put you in the head of one of those defenders out there. You have a big play like that go against you so early. What Does that shake your confidence? It shouldn't, but it often does because your thought process all during the week is how you're going to get after that offense and make your plays. And when they make one against you, it makes you a little bit hesitant. Time to regroup. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. A look at the Buccaneer starters now on defense. They were terrific last week against Buffalo in that victory. The best defenses I know, they draw lines in the sand and say, you're not going to cross that. For most of them, it's 100 yards of total offense. They didn't quite accomplish that, but still a pretty darn good game last week. Just over 100 yards of total offense given up. Darnold off the play fake to Bell. Letting one go deep for a noon lock. And incomplete, almost. 
almost intercepted. Had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. And now fourth down. Well, they took the shot, didn't get it, and there's definitely a difference here because they had a chance to get seven, maybe eight if they pushed it. Instead, they'll likely settle for three. Yeah, opening drive, holding them to three. Psychologically, maybe a win for the defense. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. And we get a glance now at the Buccaneer offense. And they should be set up for a big game. They have one of the hottest offenses in the league. They're coming in riding a winning streak, but we've seen these quick turnaround games really wreak havoc with what you've done previously. Hopefully they simplified their offense and they'll just let their play I think it's funny that they, um, they said that I had one of the hottest offenses in the league. Wait, what the fuck? And it's scooped up by the Jets. Oh, he fumbled when he was down. Touchdown, New York. All right, well, hey. Spot huge, huge play by the defense. Oh, they're going to review it. All right, good. But anyway, yeah, I think it's funny that they said that I have one of the hottest offenses in the league. It's definitely down, by the way. But, like, my offense is, like, last in terms of, like, offensive yardage, touchdowns, et cetera. So, like, <laughs> I don't know. I guess they mean because uh, I know how to keep leads or whatever the case. I don't know. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot uh, middle, to be middle, in. Middle but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. Right. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. Obviously, they didn't get everything they wanted on that completion, but they put themselves in a spot where you've got to at least think about going for it. I know where we are on the field, but still, you've got to think about it, don't you? And how about this one now? In their own territory, a gutsy call. They're going to go for this on fourth and a yard. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A big roll of the dice on fourth and one, but it pays off. They convert. So did you suspect the same thing that I did, that they were lining up just to draw them off sides here? 100%. Well, how about that? They were going for it the entire time. Never a question in his mind about going ahead and getting it, despite where they were on the field. Yeah, I don't know if you heard it in my voice when they snapped the ball. I was like, oh, I almost wasn't ready to call the play. I just kept waiting for the timeout offensively. run got three now here's second and seven Rosen will throw and this is caught by Evans and he goes down but not before getting this inside the 25 or maybe they just said I have the hottest offense in the league because I make big plays yeah, I'm just saying. that was beautiful the big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Now throwing on first down and completing it. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucks have a first down. Yeah. 
second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Rosen off the play action. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Ronald Jones, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Bucs have taken the lead. And there, the counterplay proves successful for the touchdown. What typically makes a counterplay in general successful, Charles? Well, what you're trying to do, Brandon, is to get the team moving in one direction, meaning the defense, get them going in one direction, and then wall them off with your blocking and bring it back in the other direction. That way, you don't actually have to punish them with your blocking. You just position them. And if you have any kind of a good back, they'll take full advantage of it and gain good yardage. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays and it's Ronald Jones that polishes it off with a touchdown run and following the touchdown now it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away this will be fielded on the back line of the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line the New York set to take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Levante David in on the tackle. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Looking to throw on second down. Darnold. There he goes left side. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for a Buccaneer TD. That was nice. Thank you. Remember, this is Thank the number you. one defense in the National Football Dang League. Danny White in for the touchdown. Shows that they set an aggressive tone, not just stopping the run, not just getting after the quarterback, but the ball's in the air. They treat it like they're the receivers, and they went after that one and took it all the way. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. And they gave up the pick six. And now they'll be looking to right the ship here. Now, as a quarterback, are you a little more cautious this go around? You should be, just because after what you gave up. But you can't be so cautious as to just really take things in and now you're not going to play loose enough to give your team a chance to score. But you still have to be careful because those defensive guys, I know the reputation defense guys can't catch. All evidence to the contrary on that last possession, though. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. This is Bell. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. 
Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. A gain of three, second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down now, it's Bell. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Cummings. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 36. It's a nice job hitting him on the angle route there. Come out of the backfield, cutting sharply across the middle. And that's good timing between the quarterback and his receiver. Effective third down play to move the chains. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. All that, and it only nets him a yard. It's second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. And the throw by Darnold hauled in by the tight end Herndon. And he'll go down at the 28. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they like some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And that'll be off the crossbar and out of short. He couldn't get it there. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, he had that one on target. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle, however, is distance. And he nearly had that, too. But it was a crossbar that said otherwise. And that'll deny him a shot at three. On first down, it's Thornton. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. On second down, it's Thornton. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. They'll run on first down. Thornton. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucks have a first down. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. And a penalty flag is down in the backfield as they finally bring him to the turf. And I'm not sure this is going to stand. So a decent gain, but all for not on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. From midfield now, here's Rosen. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. Call that a very strong gain of 24. That catch now puts him on the doorstep of 500. It's his 499th reception. Rosen on first and 10. Pressure comes and down goes Rosen. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. 
Here's Rosen to throw. Dagger. Looking downfield for Godwin. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Oh, man. Too easy. Chris Godwin in the final seconds of the first half. And you have two receivers that, like, just completely destroy one-on-one -on -one coverage. The prayer is answered defensively a disaster there. I know often we're surprised when this actually works. I mean, the excitement level goes way up, but maybe we shouldn't be because I know as a defender, you've got to play the ball in this situation, but you can't interfere with the Play the ball. Like, like he was nowhere foul. near it to play it. Goal if it happens in the end zone, and you don't want to give up that play, that little bit of hesitancy often works really well for offensive guys. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. That time a six-play drive. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. Come on, baby, let's go. Get that, so we've let's reached halftime here on a Thanksgiving night as we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando. It's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, once again, happy Thanksgiving, everybody as we'll run you through what's going on both today and later on this weekend. One of the best of the early games, we'll highlight it there. The Giants in for a stern test at home at MetLife Stadium as they'll be forced to reckon with the Atlanta Falcons. Then more good stuff to follow later in the afternoon. One good one being under the dome in New Orleans, where it'll be the Saints taking on the Carolina Panthers. And one more to highlight, a good one on Monday Night Football between the Kansas City Chiefs and the L.A. Chargers. In our game, it's been the UCLA man, Josh Rosen, with the strong first half. His guys have the lead, as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touch that comes out to the 25-yard line. Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now. Creeping up on 1,000. Could get there on this drive. So a challenge for him to do that. But also defensively, maybe a challenge for them to not allow that. And that means probably kicking even more coverages to his side. And what that really means is wherever he lines up, you will have a cornerback over in his area. Now, instead of blitzing your linebacker, drop him into coverage. Instead of the safety dropping into regular coverage, that safety moves into that area to try and discourage a quarterback from going to him. That means everyone else, win your routes. You've got an opportunity to catch passes now, too. Yeah, a little bit of a cat and mouse game. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Thornton. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Give them 22 yards, and that's also where they snapped it from, the 22. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice. Mm. He's Whole side of the field, wide open. Whole left side. And lucky the safety was fast, otherwise that would have been a touchdown. 27 on the catch and run. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I think not get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Now a play fake here on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. 
Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. Here we go. Here we go. The end result, 21 yards. And he has now hit number 500. Charles, that is his 500th NFL career catch. Definitely worthy of applause, but I remember when 500 meant you were going to the Hall of Fame. Nowadays, in today's football, 500 puts you on the path, a significant number. Number 500 and 1,000 yards receiving. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Second and six. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. He was trying to find O.J. Howard, but now it's third and goal. They got the win last week despite not having any interceptions. Tried to come up with one there, could not. But there's a stat category called PBU, pass breakup. That's important, too, and they got one. Yeah, there's no doubt about it because at least you're there knocking the ball away. Offense isn't possessing it, making plays downfield. And you just continue to harass the receivers, harass the quarterback, and maybe the big play does occur down the road. But a spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? But credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. The putter pinion now to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here's the Jets offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most half? Of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to. Donald, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And he is going to bring this back inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. He had the option there, decided to keep it, exposed himself and fumbled it. Yeah, and you worry about the hits he's going to take in that situation. In this case, not only does he take the hit, he coughs the ball up, as you Come noted. On. On first down, it's Thornton, and he'll take this down for about four yards down to the 15. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game, and with the lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. So they recovered the fumble, but ultimately could not take advantage of the short field. Definitely 
a lost opportunity right there. I mean, they were in prime position to put six on the board. Ended up settling for three. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now the Jets offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, man, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> On second down and four, Darnold. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Ten yards is the pickup. Good enough for a Jet first down. Now a first down carry by Bell. Call it a gain of two as time has run out on this third quarter play. We are headed to the fourth here on Thanksgiving night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now Darnold. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 45. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for the Buccaneer TD. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well prepared. Classic Rondé Barber. Gay is on for the point after. Able to up the lead by one more. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The New York set to take the field. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together. And say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily that you look at your plays, oh, this hurts the defense. I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Here's Darnold. But it was got it, complete. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The Jets on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. A shotgun snap for Donald. Got an open man. It's a noon one. Never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move <laughs> the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. They punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. We'll call that a 43-yard punt, two on the return, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. So here are the Bucs to take over on offense. They've got the lead yet again in this ball game with their winning streak right now sitting at 10. Check, crunch, crunch. 
They'll come out throwing here on first down. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, there in coverage. First quarter, Charles, you really emphasized the importance of winning the turnover battle as a visiting team, as an underdog. They haven't forced a single turnover in this game. And right now they're losing, so no turnovers might lead to no victory. That backs them up one yard and brings up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. The Bucks on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 11. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Aaron, this one out for Evans. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, are you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. The New York set to take the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, nine and he can't find room to run. Bell's going to go down, and that is going to be a safety. Things are just going from bad to worse now. It's a safety that does him in here, and that is one frustrated offensive unit. They can't get out from under their own shadow right now. I mean, I know this is the NFL, but could you imagine a college crowd right now? Imagine what they'd be doing. <laughs> they'd be chanting, start the bus, because they think this one is over. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. Fielded just inside the 20. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. The outcome of this one, well, we know who's going to win it. It's just all window dressing at this point. Got me thinking, what's... What's the biggest blowout that you've been a part of as a player, broadcaster? No, I'm not going to go to the player part because when I think blowout... Because you won every game as a player. No, no, no. I think about being blown out. <laughs> and no one wants to go back to those memories. But, you know, when I was calling college football, I saw a game that, you know, a team put 70. I actually saw it happen twice. A team put 70 on their opponent. And in the NFL in the 2017 season, I saw one of those changing of the guard games where a team that hadn't been very good before now is dominating and kicking around a team who had been we ruling got, their got, division. And that's when you earn your paycheck, right? As the, as the analyst, you got to fill that time. You've got to know what's going on out there and how it all happened. Well, obviously, that begs the question, what game was it? That was Seattle hosting Los Angeles, the Rams. Oh, yeah. Their second meeting of the season, and the Rams turned it around from the first one and blew out the Seahawks. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And they have just about put this one on ice as they've got it here first and 10. On play action, they'll throw. Airing this one out for Evans. Got a man, it's caught at the six yard line. A big pickup of 38. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long. And I would say that going along with that has been confidence. Because even if they had the right coverage, they've still dented them. And now it's been a real issue for them during this game. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. 
When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead because now the defense can't. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. And for them, this train, it just keeps rolling, doesn't it? Well on their way to yet another victory. Yeah, it's almost a runaway, isn't it? And you just wonder how anyone can stop this. they got full momentum going, full confidence going. But it's not just their own confidence that is leading them. It's the lack of confidence against their opponents now because they see them coming and think, we've got no shot to beat this team. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead will swell by one more. So the drive there took six plays. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Jets' offense gets ready to head back on the field. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And a coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Herndon's got it complete. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for Tampa Bay, the perfect season remains intact as they move to 11-0 on the year. And they'll get a few extra days. And that's the game, everybody. Thank you for watching. My name is Advance, and I will always continue to be. I'm out. Get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.